interesting with this yes. now. According to the Nigerian Tribune, fuel subsidy are, f um, are a form of government intervention to reduce the cost of fuel by providing direct financial support to oil companies and as such subsidize the product to consumers, um, which are Nigerians in this case. Now, Nigeria is one of Africa's largest producers of crude oil and it relies heavily on these resources for its economic growth. With the withdrawal or the removal of fuel subsidy, analysts believe that Nigeria's projected debt stock of $171 billion will be raised by a further 0.47%. Now, this development will also raise the sinking funds for refinancing and servicing all the debt stock from 29% um, scheduled in 2023, uh, a proportion bill to 43.8% of the 2024 financial year. Now, according to, uh, rather, additionally, removing the subsidy could lead to social unrest and protests as people may receive the government's um, as, or they may perceive the government as insensitive to their needs, and there is also a risk that the removal of the subsidy could lead to a rise in fuel smuggling and other illegal activities. So today we're asking what the subsidy, uh, what should Nigerians should expect with the subsidy removal. Now, please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 384 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so this is interesting. First of all, <laughs> if you have no business going outside, don't be out. Don't be out. Just stay inside of your house. Um, so it's actually very, so, so for me, I think um, Nigerians are actually, we're, we're, we're the biggest problems that we have as a people. Um, this thing was announced and all of a sudden, yes, I understand that we would always have these panic buyers would always have people like really my tank was at the last um what do they call that thing that last um quarter or whatever they call it right and i kept on saying don't worry i'll buy it i'll buy it mm. but my mic kept on saying oh i just fill your tank fill your tank so when i was coming back from the um, what's it called thankfully my tank is not where you have much crowd because my tank is on the right right side so usually um the the, the cues on my own end is really very short that's why i actually like you know the brand of the car that i i drive right um but hey this thing um the scarcity and all of those things this is man-made right for god's sake yep. a lot of fuel stations they have stock it's not like they don't have stock but because you know, this, this announcement has been made. All of a sudden, some people have already even hiked their price. My mom called me today and said um, they're buying fuel in Kaduna at 700 naira per liter, right? Um, so already, people are already increasing the prices, even though the NMPC boss has said they have stock and there's fuel. Um, so now, government, government officials are also taking some kind of measures, because I saw, I think it was Kwara State government, that said, if you dare you know, um, hot fuel or whatever, they would, they would um, they'll withdraw your C of O. They will seal up your, your station. So, I mean, if we take up all those measures, maybe we'll find a solution. But today is just really, how do we start to manage ourselves as the fuel crisis is happening? Let me hear your thoughts, and I'll come to the ladies on, on the Zoom. Um, well, it's, first of all, when it comes to the subsidy in Nigeria, I know that the government has spent a lot of money in the last couple of years. I know that between, I think between 2005 and 2021, uh, the Nigerian government has spent at least up to about 3.9 trillion on just, you know, things uh, for subsidy and things like this. So it's costing, we know that it's costing from all the analysis that has been done, it's costing us a lot of money in order to... We don't have a problem with them removing the subsidy. I think it's just the structure yes, and the fact around that it seems it. like it is abrupt. There was no plan. Yes. Right? So these are the issues. So in our usual way, we don't we don't plan and when we do plan, we don't carry the people along. Mm. So and that's what causes this panic buying because the people are not sure exactly what is going on. This news just came out just yesterday and just before within the next twelve hours this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. And that's just because, like you said, it wasn't properly communicated in a way. Anyone would know, if you've been in Nigeria long enough, you should know that even having such a statement from the President of the Federal Republic carries a lot of weight. Carries a lot of weight and you just entered the office. 
So I understand that you want to reassure the people on, you know, all the things that you said during the just before the elections, and you want to come through on your promises. But you know, some of these things you need to let the people know that there is a process uh, of getting getting there, and this is the process that you you and your team will take in order to make sure that this doesn't affect the nation in a negative way. And this is just barely 24 hours later, and see what is everywhere is madness. Just to pick a cab, most of, just to pick a cab from one point to another point, which maybe used to cost uh, an individual a thousand naira, now costs on any of the apps down to the cheapest. Now cost about two thousand five hundred. So three thousand. I had a lot of my colleagues, you know, who didn't know how to get home, and some of them were even on. Um, they use uh, this service called Shotlass, mm -hmm. and guess what? Just before the end of close of business today, they all got a message that they needed to cancel their ride for today because the driver wasn't able to get any petrol. Yeah. So everyone who left the mainland to the island to work was stranded. Let me hear your thoughts, Uti, uh, and then I'll come to you, Norma. Well, anything Jay has sort of um, mentioned the bit I think that is most frustrating for me. Uh, we're just coming off an administration where it was clear that communication was, was a problem, practically a problem, right? And to have something as important as the inaugural address, I mean, I understand wanting to make bold statements, but I mean, typical inaugural addresses are about unity, about coming together, about working together, about putting aside all the divisiveness of the electoral or the election process. That's what it's about, you know. But to then take such a sensitive and important topic and to just throw it out there, forgive me, I can't think of any other thing to say, but yeah. Like, how are people supposed to react? We know Nigerians. We know that issues of holding, of panic buying, of people being concerned about implementation. I mean, this is a topic that we've been talking about for many years. You know, to just throw it out there without any context, I don't know what the expectation was of that kind of declaration. I mean, it was so ill-timed, it was so not structured properly. I hope that this is not a sign. I mean, I keep saying it. PR is like, I mean, come on, when are we going to get it right with the Nigerian government? When? It is just so frustrating. And the fact is, you know, having such a poorly delivered, I don't even know what to call it, just, of course, nobody's surprised. I mean, I was speaking to someone this morning and the person said, look, when I heard that yesterday, I was lying down in my bed. I literally jumped up, got dressed, drove my car out, filled my tank, filled my wife's tank, bought four cakes. I mean, that's the natural response like that because we know. The marketers will hold. We know people will panic by. We know that. I mean, I am literally not upset today because as I speak to you, my car still has been, been trying to buy petrol since 9 a.m. this morning. Has been to four or five different petrol stations. And as I speak to you now, 12 hours later, or almost 12 hours later, I still haven't bought petrol. Mm. So what little petrol I had left has been spent going from petrol station to petrol station trying to find petrol. That is, today is the first working day of the week. Completely messed up today. I don't even know what tomorrow is going to look like if we don't get petrol today. So the fact is, first of all, the root cause of this is just very, very, in very poor taste. Now, on the other side of it, like I hear you, the first thing I heard somebody say this morning is, ah, it's not selling for 500 naira a litre. Now, we keep blaming the government. But let's be honest. We sell our hands inside. We don't like ourselves. We don't love ourselves. Right? These elements that we keep saying corruption like it's somebody else's problem, the grid runs everywhere. Right? Because if you are trying, because of an announcement, you are trying to essentially hike the price and take advantage of it. You are still being paid subsidy for the current fuel that you have. Nobody has given you an official date. I mean, I was a bit annoyed to now see that there was a bit of a piggybacking today to come and backtrack and say eh, that they didn't say it was instantaneous, that it was going to be, I think, the end of June before um, it was going to be removed. 
again, this comes to implementation. This comes to how we think about the impact of the things that we do. Even if you want to young kids, is it in 30 days? Like, isn't there a process? Isn't there adjustment? Mm. Isn't there planning? Yeah. Why do we do things like this in Nigeria? And then the average man is suffering. And then you think that they're going to have faith in the government? Sometimes so, so, it's hard. You want to be positive. You want to say the government is, is, is doing things. But then when they do things like this, you have to shut up. It's really so sad, today, Uti mm. is not a happy camper. And you people know. As in, it's not very funny. <laughs> you'll be all right. Uti, you'll be all right. So let's go on a very short break. We'll come back. We want to open our phone lines. Hopefully, we'll hear from our viewers then. We'll also uh, speak to Norma. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you just tuned in, we are discussing subsidy removal and we're asking what Nigerians should expect, right? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 3 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa, one of the hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 70 That's the number to call. Remember to turn off the volume of whatever device it is that you are watching us or listening from. Right. I mean, um, Norma, let me hear your thoughts, even though you have escaped. <laughs> well, only briefly. Trust me, we feel the pain. We have family members who still live there and who will still depend on you to either send something or to help one way or the other. So you're going to feel the impact one way or the other. Um, I guess, uh, of course, this subsidy issue has been a, a conversation that has been had for several years as it were and um it was still what i have to say will still tally with what uti and ng have already mentioned and i would always come from the perspective of consideration and our humanity i think nigeria uh, will need leaders that will really feel the pulse of the people. I know that subsidy is supposed to help us as a people because we cannot, this is something that has been said times without number, that we cannot continue in this manner because it's going to run our nation completely to the ground, right? And if it is removed. There are definitely some benefits that will come in, in the place of uh, being able to use resources. The amount of resources that pumped into uh, false subsidy can be diverted to other equally important issues concerning healthcare, concerning uh, infrastructure, and all of that, right? But then again, the impact, that's what we're talking about. How we go about doing things is a very serious problem. And I would pray that this administration will get it right, even though it's almost like they're falling our hand already because with this um, information from the speech that the president gave, the reaction, we saw it across board, Ibadan, Lagos, every aspect of Nigeria is being affected. Panic buying, of course, people have already started increased price. Nigerians, like Uti said, we are not fair to ourselves. You still have petrol, and this is not the one that is affected by fuel subsidy, and already you are thinking of how to hike the prices. There are people who cannot commute to their, their local places of work or even do their daily uh, duties and responsibilities because of increase in prices. We already have cases of inflation. Definitely, there's going to be inflation. There's going to be reduced purchase, purchasing power of people. People can no longer afford to imagine that some, I mean, there was a chat that was going on in one of the groups I belong to. People were saying that, can you imagine uh, uh, um, prices uh, hiked to 500 or to 1,000 Naira? I mean, it's almost unbelievable because at the end of the day, people who could not even afford 500 that you can imagine, cost of uh, so, people who could not even uh, afford to pay their tea fare, having increased amounts to pay for, so it I, will only lead to a lot more 
um, uh, um, uh, a lot more incidents of, you know, protests, unrest and all of that. So yeah. I think um, it's something that our leaders need to really pay attention to. Even the foil smuggling, there are people that are going to redraw the foil that they have. Cues, some of the, and I, I heard some of the filling stations shut down completely while some others opened, but the prices were really high. Okay, so it's so going to affect people who not afford to even, the cost of living is going to also increase. People okay. will no longer be able to afford food, even food. Now, everything is going to be blamed on fuel subsidy. We've seen it happen times to that number. The next is something that you bought today, tomorrow you go to buy, they say, ah, it's fuel subsidy. No, but so everything is, is actually to... tied, Norma. It's not like um, the small business owner oh, is, deli is de deliberately trying to hike the price. Because again, you must consider as a business person if they are going to go and restock that thing. Okay, so somebody was saying that commuting from Aja, for instance, to VI, um, before was like 300 naira. Now she, she needed to pay a thousand naira to get to her. So you don't expect that if somebody has spent that amount of money, you know, probably going to go and get goods or whatever, they would, the price of the goods would definitely change. But I was just going to say that let's not dwell on the challenges. Now we are looking for how to cope in the midst of this fuel subsidy. So these are like small steps. So for us as a small business, We've decided to, to do a structure for a hybrid structure in terms of workers. Because again, you really can't uh, have them um, come in every day. Because in fact, interestingly, we had just had a conversation with a member of my staff and we talked about oh, how it was really expensive for her. And by the time she made the suggestion about um, what's it called, hybrid work, you know, do two days on, on um, three days on, two days off, it made sense. So maybe small businesses should, should start to consider, you know, options like that so that they don't have to come in every single day to the office. Because the truth is, um, as it stands now, small businesses cannot afford to say they want to do salary increments or whatever. Because where is the money even going to come from? We really don't have those resources, right? So if, by all means, if there are ways you can, you know, cushion the, the effect of this, because it will impact heavily, right? And for people that are very, very, um, what's it called, um, insensitive to the fact that everybody's going through this thing, you know, unnecessary, you've suffered to get the feel, then you now spend like hours again trying to navigate your way out of traffic. So today I was coming to the studio and a two-lane way that, you know, it goes to both ways. The people that are going on, like going, and I was coming, they had blocked up the entire road, you understand? Because their lane had a very, very massive heavy traffic and it was caused by a fuel station. But you see, you do that, you are okay. But you, you're, you're not considering somebody else that is even going, okay, that their roads are free. So a lot of these things are like man-made. And because of that, people kind of like, they take the, the senses, it takes a break. That they take leave of their senses. Like people just act very irrational without even considering that somebody else, you know, would probably yeah. use this road. Somebody else, I mean, you go to the fuel station, there's a decent queue, but you see somebody that would come from, from nowhere and say they want to, you know, enter. So all these little, little things, it adds up. And that's why, again, government is coming out. I, I mean, I saw, I sent a video of the Lagos State Governor also cautioning um, people that these things is not, is not government at this point. It is us that is actually dealing with ourselves. So, I mean, if you understand that, if you have no business going out, stay home. If you, I mean, limit your, your movement, then for small businesses, if you're able to even cope with um, a structure that helps your staff do hybrid work, fine. Then now, again, people really need to start considering how, I don't even know how to explain it now, but it, it's even tough because cost of living is high. It, normally, people go f far distance to work, right? So if I say that I want to live closer to my work environment, would I be able to afford you know, paying rent in that area? So it's a, it's a very multiple problem. And it has a ripple effect. Yeah, but I think we have a caller. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Hi, you're live. Go ahead. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I I, I don't know. I got your contact somewhere either online. So I wanted to find out something. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. It's... Okay. I my wife wanted to do a family call. Okay, I think you have to call back. I don't know what to say. 
That's it. This guy is noisy, man. Yes, because we're on a live show. I, I, obviously, you're not watching. You're just calling a number. So maybe you should send a text or whatever it is that you want your inquiry. Ah, this will. <laughs> All right, so I mean, so Uti, let me come back to you then. Uh, we'll wrap up this conversation. Well, I mean, if we're talking about what people should expect, I think you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, some of the suggestions you've made, uh, perhaps more feasible than some, because when I think of a lot of small businesses, they may not have that, their business structure may not essentially allow it. If you have a shop, it's not possible for your staff to work remotely. So that's what I mean. Um, but yeah, I, the, the, for me, I think that the impact of what we're looking at is, I want to be hopeful in how the removal of the subsidy will be implemented, right? Several times in the past, we've called to say, um, if we had had smaller increments over a space of time, right, that would have allowed people to gradually adjust. You know, moving from, uh, what are we now, 186 naira, I think that's where we are, officially. Moving from that to a 400 naira or a 500 naira is, is like a, over 100% increase, almost 200% increase, if my math is correct, right? That is not an easy adjustment to make for anyone, regardless of, um, you know, who you are and what your financial circumstances are. If you look at the cars on the road, the size of the engines of the cars, I mean, some people, the cost of a full tank of petrol is, is going to almost triple. So the fact is, no matter what it is, everybody's going to have, a, have to make an adjustment. Whether it's how many days you drive your car, whether it's, you know, how you plan your movements, all of these things will impact businesses who um, run staff buses. All of these things, they all have massive repercussions. So to even then hear that, oh, we're saying, oh, by June 30th. I mean, is that, is that really feasible? I think we all agree that the subsidy has to go because we can't afford it. I'm, I'm number one in, 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 in that part of the, of, the, of the perspective. But there must be a concrete plan mm -hmm. in terms of how it is going to be um, discontinued it's not like a sheet of paper that you can just rip it off and say okay let's start writing on the next page and it's all fine it's not that simple right we're already dealing with high inflation all these sort of you know cost of living let me use the the, the phrase that that is running around in the uk cost of living crisis that you know we're dealing with right all of these things are impacting us as nigerians and let's not forget that when these things happen they have bigger ramifications on things like security. So everybody then is, in one way or the other, at risk. So in implementing this, my only feedback and comment is, please, let's look at the implementation in a way that is not going to, I mean, no matter what, it is going to negatively impact, but in a way that is not going to be completely, utterly detrimental and devastating to the average Nigerian man. Mm. I think I'll leave it there. I was just going to add that, then I'll come to you, Noma and NJ, to, to just wrap up. I was going to add that um, it would be nice for, um, over the years, we've not seen transparency when it comes to figures and numbers, right? It would be nice yeah. if, for once, our government is a bit transparent. Because we know what the price of oil or the price of whatever is. Okay. And let's not forget that the Dangote refinery, you know, would start very soon, like in terms of, like, full full on operation so i don't know how that would impact but you know what moving from 190 something naira all the way to um 500 naira that's a lot it's i mean it's it's something that i don't even know how people are going to cope you know but people would argue with you that they have been buying fuel from for a very high price for a very long time you know in the east, in the east and in the other, north, you know other places, but it has doubled you know so well, now what it means that those ones that have been buying 500 they are buying 1000 but well, let's take uh, another caller. Good evening. Hello. Good Hello. evening. Good evening. Yes, go ahead. Um, I want to, I want to contribute to this. Yes, please go ahead, Adeleke. Okay. Um, my suggestion. I think that before the uh, when uh, the former uh, government, they said if you don't come back. To using gas. Is there anything we can do that? Can we think to that direction? Okay. Or what do you think? Convert the cars to what? Oh. So that we'll be using that. Oh, yeah, yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. That is very yeah. possible. I mean, I know that in Edo State, there was a year I went to Edo State. I, I took a cab, and the cab actually drove into a gas station. And it was LPG. It was, yes, it was gas. Thank you, Adeleke. And I think it's cheaper. Yeah. And in fact, from what the driver, because I had to, like, engage the driver. And the driver said, see, um, gas is cheaper. And at the same time, maintenance, you know, it's not as, you know, the, because the um, combustion that happens doesn't leave as much work, um, engine load the way, um, what's it called, petrol so it does, right? So, I mean, it, it meant even the en engine maintenance, effic efficiency of the car, all of that, yeah. it's more effective. So, I mean, if, if there's an option that for less people to start, then also. again, I know that, um, I think it's Owando that want to partner with Lamata to bring in electric buses. Yeah. So very soon, you know, um, we're just going to say that pending when all of these things really take full effect, right? I know Edo State, they were really big on we gas. We still have an LPG supply issue, so... Yeah, <laughs> but, but you see, even if we have an LPG supply issue, right, um, Uti, so instead of gas flaring, so we're thinking, okay, how do we convert those and people use them because it's way cheaper. And guess what? Even the combustion, it doesn't, it doesn't burn as fast as petrol, right? So it's a, it's a better option. So people just go, they need no, to do some I, conversions. I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you that it's a better option, right? But we're talking about scalability, right, and feasibility. You are talking about converting circa how many hundreds of thousands, billions of cars? We, we have to... These things don't happen overnight. So it's not mm -hmm. like it's not an alternative. People have been converting cars to LP, you know, LPG, you know, privately. But it's not a mainstream solution. For us to move to a different source of fuel is not a year, it's not two years, right? Look how long it's taking for electric cars, and it still hasn't had a 100%, you know, um, foothold. So the fact is, it comes down to us having a plan to say, okay, we're going to reduce what, what are even the, the um, MDG goals. You're talking 2030, it's, it's a long time. These things don't happen overnight. So even if you say you want to use LPG or you want to use a uh, used vegetable oil, I mean, there's all sorts of alternatives. But it's not going to happen overnight because guess what? You still need mechanics who are going to be able to fix these cars. Mm. Today, we are talking a pure... I mean, even if you have a diesel car in Nigeria, it's not that easy to maintain. Absolutely. So we, there's a long way to go from there. I mean, it's a great suggestion, but it's now about how we build a plan that gets us to the promised land. Okay, so let's quickly take uh, comments. Um... So I have a comment here that says, uh, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, ways? Uh, subsidy removal. What should Nigerians expect? I don't really understand what is happening. This administration did not start well. When you start like this by removing subsidy and the fuel queues surfaces, then you did not... Then you did not give you did not start well that is my own take the first impression counts if we start a new administration like this then there will be problem confusion everywhere god help us now we are forced to stay at home for no just cause i hope we have not entered one chance in this present and in administration my name is david Ilo. daniel we Ilo. daniel Ilo. sorry <laughs> ways regular fan Okay, well, I think we ran out of time, Steph. We can't even take any more comments. But thank you so much, ladies. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to... Let's, um, I think um, what Norma said about consideration, let's just consider that there are other people that are in this thing together. We're all in it together. If you consider the next man, you will not act selfishly. You know? And all this kind of, what's it called, drama that we're seeing happening, the cues and everything, it would actually subside. But hey... Nigerians will always be Nigerians. Thank you so much, Uti. Thank you, Norma. Thank you, NJ. Now, before we go, do ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. The fuel subsidy is gone. Subsidy can no longer justify... Uh, it's ever increasing cost in the wake of dying resources. We shall instead rechannel the funds into better investment in public infrastructure, education, healthcare, and jobs that will uh, materially improve the lives of millions of Nigerians. And this is from President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. Now, this conversation around rechanneling the subsidy funds, 
What we are asking for from the government is transparency. Let's actually even see what it is that we have and what we're working with. Let's, let's be different for once and not do things, you know, same old and expected different results. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen.